everyone. A uh, good day. I hope that you guys are super duper okay when watching this video. So today, I am going to discuss my assigned topic which is the trait theory and factor analytic approach by Raymond Cattell. So at first, titignan muna natin yung life background ni Katel. So hindi na natin siya masyadong i-detailed kasi mas magpo-focus tayo doon sa approach na dinevelop niya. So he was a British and American psychology. He was who was born on March 20, 1905 in Staffordshire, England. He studied psychology at the University of London and earned his PhD in 1929. He worked with Charles E. Sperman, who developed the technique of factor analysis to study the structure of personality. Uh, he dead or he died in 1993 at the age of 93. So, ano ba nga ba yung mga contribution niya? So, ano mga naging contribution niya ay he published or he developed a less than or equal to 50 scholarly books, greater than 500 research articles, and greater than 30 standardized psychometric, psychometric tests, questionnaire, and rating skills. So, ito na yung pag-uusapan natin. Ito yung approach na kung saan dinidevelop niya or nakikilala siya na siya yung gumawa nito. The 16 personality traits. Additional uh, background lang no about si Katel. Si Katel kasi, isa sa mga psychologist na very mathematician yung approach niya. Um, um, dagdag pa niya or Kung pagbabasihan natin yung motivation niya kung bakit nagawa niya tong 16 personality traits ay sabi niya doon masyado daw kasi famous sa psychology yung about sa rational and common sense lang na theories. Dagdag pa niya kung, uh, kung nasa rationalist lang daw lahat ng perspective na isang tao mas mahirap daw i-prove or going legitimate yung um yung traits na isang tao same with Allport he also went to the dictionary uh, to look for words and adjectives uh, that will describe a person's characteristics but his aim is to look for uh, traits that is shared by all human beings so ano ba nga ba tong 16 personality traits basically ito yung mga source traits natin Main set of factors whereby a person can be classified and then analysis of personality describing words. Lastly, 18,000. Ano ba yung 18,000? Yung 18,000 dito, ito yung 18,000 words na kung saan, di ba nga ginaya niya nga si Alport? So, yung 18,000 na yun, parang yun yung galing kay Alport na ginaya niya. So, from 18,000, he listed down 4,500 words which he converted into 171 items or 171 questions. Ang ginawa niya, ang ginawa niya dito sa 171 questions or items is pinapasagot niya sa ibang tao in a way na he collecting data or he collected data uh, from various contexts. Halimbawa, uh, may, may isa siyang sample. Tapos binibigay niya ito Tapos binibigay niya to sa iba't ibang tao. Alibaw yung instruction niya, okay, ito yung 171 uh, items. Um, Tapos sasabihin niyo lang kung itong items na to is describe yung taong to, describe ka, or yung kakilala mo. Parang ganon. Kasi ang aim niya lang naman dito is para makakuha ng data. Yun nga, sabi ko kanina, kung, kung ang isang tao na to, or kung Kung itong traits ba ito ay nagdi-describe sa'yo or nagdi-describe sa isang tao. Yung parang ganun. But, for example then, ito kasing sa 171 questions, ang mangyayari, 171 questions will be answered by 1,000 people. And it is correlated with each other. So, ang mangyayari dyan, um, 
Yung sagot sa 1 is i-correlate niya sa sagot sa 2. Depending on the approach. If halimbawa, may correlation. Saka lang magkakaroon ng cluster. Or saka lang siya gagawa ng cluster if there is a, a, a same pattern or same traits. These clusters are the factors wherein can be considered as the states. For example, yung, yung 1, 2, and 5. The 1, 2, and 5 are correlated with each other. So, ibig sabihin nun, they are pertaining to the same trait, the same factor, or the same pattern. Yun yun. Yung sinasabi kong cluster kanina, yun yung, yun yung, yun na yung pattern na kung saan nagkakaroon na ng um, nagkakaroon na ng same, same, same pattern or same traits. And then, he also, he also yielded a, um, 35, 35 primary factors. 23, yung doon sa normal population, and then 12 for the pathological population. When we say pathological population, ito yung mga abnormal population. Pero hindi niya masyadong dinevelop yung about sa pathological population kasi nga, mas nagpo-focus siya doon sa uh, 23 na normal population. And out of 23, um, 16 of them are the most uh, frequently studied, which is called ito yung personality traits. Okay. Um, ang tanong, paano niya nakuha itong mga factors na ito? Or ato, anong, anong ginagamit niya? Imagine from 18,000 to 4,500 words to 171 until finally 16 personality traits. So, ang ginagamit niya is the factor factor analysis. So basically, we need or we should correlate or correlate all the data and let's see if there is if there is a pattern. So pag sinasabi nating factor analysis, ito yung it is a collection of statistical procedure to compute for underlying factor that will describe a data set. So big sabihin, ito lang yung ito lang yung strive to summarize the relationships uh, from a large number of variables into fewer until doon sa more general patterns. So, ano lang yung dinidescribe dito? Dinidescribe nyo lang dito yung mga fundamental dimensions of individual differences. Yun yung nangyari doon. And then next, ang factor analysis, may dalawang uri yun siya. Um, the exploratory and then the confirmatory. And then, yung exploratory, yun lang yung kay Katel. Kasi yung confirmatory, kay Hans Einzink naman yan. So, magpo-focus tayo dito kay um, exploratory. Exploratory factor analysis. It is a kind of factor analysis. Yes, nabang ito kanina na ito yung uri ng fa of factor analysis. From data to theory. Bakit sila sinasabi na it is from data to theory? Kasi, ini-explore niya lang yung data. Kung mayroon pang pattern na nabubuo or nafo-form. Yun yung sinasabing from data to theory. Bakit sila sabi impractical? Um, basically, empirical din siya. Kasi nga, imagine, kailangan mo muna gumawa ng napakaraming items. Ah, hindi ka pa sure kung lahat ng items na yun is pasok ba doon? Or yun ba yung, yun ba yung, yun ba yung may common? Or may mga same traits? ba Napaka-impractical or napaka-empirical. Next, it is highly I mean, relatively free from scientist bias. Kasi nga, wala kang theory or wala kang kinoconfirm na bias or na magiging legitimate or, or magiging prove mo na ito yung traits na yon. Okay, ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina na 16 personality traits. Kung pagmamasdan natin, napaka napakahirap niyang intindihin. Napakahirap niyang intindihin. So, sa kabilang slide, doon ko na lang siya i-discuss kung ano ba talaga yung laman ng 16 personality traits na yun, kung ano ba yung mga under niya, kung ano may yung mga kinukonsider na trait, napasok siya doon sa 16. Okay, yan yun. Warm, abstract thinker, emotionally stable, dominant, enthusiastic, consensus, 
bold, tender-minded, suspicious, imaginative, shrewd, apprehensive, experimenting, self-sufficient, controlled, and intense. Okay, bago tayo mag-proceed sa yung mga under niya, or yung mga, yung mga mm, kinoconsider, Ano nga ba yung ano nga ba itong 16 personality? Ano ba? Ano ba ano bang ano ito? Ano bang purpose nito? Ito kasi 16 personality factors. Ito yung assessment in human behavior na nagagaling siya sa test or sa mga questionnaire. Ito din yung nagpi-predict ng uh, sa isang tao kung paano siya nagbe-behave or kung paano siya nag-interact with others. Interact or responses niya, responses niya in some situation. Ito din yung how well suited um, that they are to be able to, para yung makapasok sa job, requirements of the job, if they will fit into the extent of the team. Parang ganun. Dito kasi, dito sa 16 personality factors, madidiscuss talaga niya yung characteristic na without immediate, hindi natin napapansin, kaya nga hindi natin masyado in sa sarili natin. Okay, sa, sa warm, andoon yung kung outgoing ka ba or reserved. Sa abstract thinker naman, naman kung reasoning ka ba or concrete. Sa emotionally stable naman, calm ka ba or high strong. And then sa dominant naman, andoon yung forceful or submissive. Enthusiastic yung pagiging liveliness. Or yung spontaneous ba or restrained. Sa bold naman, ay yes. Sa consensus naman, ito naman yung conforming ka or non-conforming. Sa bold naman or the social boldness, kung sensitive, tough ka ba, or hindi. I, I mean, un, un, uninhibited or shy. Kung sa tender-minded naman, kung, kung yun yung tough-minded ka ba, or hindi. Sa tender-minded naman, doon naman yung sensitivity. And this is suspicious, yun yung vigilance, trusting, imaginative, kung abstract or practical, uh, sa shrewd, uh, vulnerable or the insightful, experimenting, self-sufficient, self-sufficient kung self-reliance or dependent, sa control naman, perfectionism or undisciplined, and then sa tense or attention kung, in, kung impatient ka ba or relax. Okay, let's continue. Ito naman yung sample plot nung um, dito sa uh, pag-plot ng 16 personality factor. Yan yung pagkakaroon ng plot niya. Okay, dito naman tayo sa personality trait. According to Katal, trait is um, relatively permanent reaction tendencies that are the basic um, basic structural units of the personality. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? So, basically, ito daw yung mga pag-uugali natin, yung pattern natin, or responses natin na lating, lagi natin ginagawa. Yun lang yung ibig sabihin ni kata sa trait. Okay. According to Katal, he classified a a personality traits into several ways. Meron tayong uh, common, meron tayong unique, ability, um, temperament, dynamic, surface, source, constitutional, and then environmental mode. So, mag-start tayo dito sa common traits. Kapag kasi pag sinasabi natin common traits, ito yung, uh, ito yung, ito yung the one that is possessed by everyone to some degree. Ito yung Meron tayo sa isa't isa. Halimbawa, meron tayong siya, may some degree, meron siyang some degree of intelligence. Ako meron. So, ibig sabihin, meron common. Next, unique traits. Uh, those, the aspects of personality shared by a few other people and are particularly apparent in our interests and attitude. Ano lang sinasabi nito? Ito lang yung pag-unique traits, di ba? Pag-unique traits, kakaiba. So, kung sino talaga yung, I mean, kung saan nagdi-distinguish tong taong to, ito yung trait niya na kung saan dito siya nakikilala. Or when it comes sa interest niya, iba, interest siya sa basketball, parang dyan siya nakikilala. Okay, next. Ability traits determine how efficiently we will be able to work 
toward a goal. So, ito naman yung how fast or how far we can perform in a specific goal. Abilidad. Ganon. Next, temperament traits. When we say temperament traits, describe the general style and emotional tone of our behavior. So, as sinasabi lang dito, ito yung, um, ito yung, ito yung paano tayo mag-react or, an, or yung way ng responses natin kung paano tayo mag-react in a specific situation. Pwedeng pagalit, may halong galit pag nag-react sa, sa isang situation or kalma lang. Ganon. Next is dynamic traits. Ito naman yung mga mga driving force or nagtutulak sa atin na mga behavior. Surface traits. Ito yung personality characteristics that correlate with one another but do not constitute a factor. So, take note guys na dalawa to siya. Surface and and source traits. Kapag kasi nasabi kasi natin ng surface traits, ito yung mga visible na mga traits. Ito yung mababaw na pag-uugali na nakikita natin sa isang tao. Kapag ka naman source traits, source traits, ito naman yung kabaliktaran. Pag source traits, ito yung less visible. Kaya sinasabi unitary personality factors that are more stable and permanent. So, ito yung mga hindi natin masyadong nakikita sa isang tao. Next, Constitutional traits originate in biological conditions but are not necessarily innate. So, ibig sabihin lang ito, ito yung inborn, inborn, inborn traits. Eh ba, yung, yung pagkabata ka. Inborn traits, kung ano yung ugali mo ng bata ka. Environmental mold traits derive from influences in our social and physical environments. So, basically, ito yung, ito yung mga traits na kung saan na i-implementsahan natin sa ating environment sa ibang tao. Okay. Dito na tayo sa dynamic traits, the motivating uh, the motivating forces. Um, Katal description of dynamic traits concerned by motivation forces. Bakit? Because he believed that a personality um, trait that failed to uh, consider the impact of dynamic, nare-refer siya as incomplete. Bakit incomplete? Saan, sa paanong paraan nagiging incomplete? In, incomplete in a way na they are trying to describe themselves but failing to say kung anong trait meron sila. Okay, ulitin natin na Incomplete na dinatay nila na dinescribe nila yung sarili nila, sarili nila Pero, nahihirapan sila kung anong trait ang meron sila. Yung parang ganun. Okay, next. Two types of dynamic or motivating traits. So, meron dalawa. So, makinig kayo guys kasi hindi ko siya ini-include dun sa rating report. Okay, the urge and the sentiments. Kapag kasi nasabi natin urge, ito yung from the Greek word, uh, from the Greek word urgeon, which means ito yung mga work on energy. Katal use urge to denote the concept of in strength or drive forces. So, ito yung mga driving forces or nagtutulak sa atin ng pag-uugali na, na isang tao na kung saan nagsiset siya ng specific goals. Or, excuse me, nagsiset siya ng nagsiset siya na ng specific structure of personality natin. Kapag ka kasi, okay, ito yung nabubuo ni Katel, habang, habang ina-identify niya yung urge. So, so may nabuo siyang 11 urge. Ito daw yon. Ito yung anger, yung appeal natin, yung, yung appeal natin, yung, um, yung curiosity natin, yung disgusting, yung gregariousness, yung may say gregariousness, yun yung pagiging matulungin natin, hunger, yung protection, security, yung self-assertion. When you say self-assertion, ito yung paninindigan or may sinasabi lang may isang salita. Self-submission and then sex. Yun yun. Yun yung sinasabi na, sinasabing urge. Okay? Sentiments. Kapag ka sa sentiments naman, ito naman yung mga 
environmental mood source trait. Bakit? Kasi nga, it is derived from, ito yung mga traits natin na derived from external. So, ito yung social and physical. Ito yung pattern as na, na we learned attitudes that focus on an important aspect. Such as yung sa personal community. Yung sa asawa, yung sa mag-asawa, tapos yung sa trabaho, and then yung sa religion or sa happy. Yun naman yung sa sentiments. Sentimental. Yung kumbaga, ganun. Bakit ko ito nababanggit? Or bakit ko ito siya sinasama? Or bakit siya kasama sa motivating forces? Kasi nga, the urges and sentiments are re relatively rela related to our attitude through the concept of subsidiation. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng subsidiation? Ito yung subordinate or to place to other elements. Parang ito yung ito yung ito yung nagde-drive natin sa attitude natin kung paano na shape yung yung personality natin dahil dito sa motivating forces na ito. And next one, the influences of heredity and environment. When we say naman sa heredity and environment, he investigated the importance of heredity and environment by statistically comparing similarities found between twins reared in the same family, twins reared apart, non-twin siblings reared in the same family, and non-twin siblings reared above, apart. So, ang sabi kasi ni Katel, yung sa influences ng heredity and environment, dito, sinishape yung personality trait natin. Na-influensyahan or Dahil sa influences na yun, nabuo yung personality natin. Ito yung sabi lang nature versus nurture. Next, Katal's development of, Katal's stages of development. So, andito yung sa infancy, childhood, adolescence, maturity, late maturity, and old age. So, basically, ano na lang natin to eh, review na lang siya. So, sa infancy, birth to six, a develop niya winning toilet training uh, formation of ego super ego yung pagbalance ng ego and super ego and then social attitudes and then siya under siya nun. sa childhood naman 6 to 14 independence from parents and identification with peers namimili tayo kung sino yung gusto nating kasama or saan tayo gustong sa mama sa 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 mama ba or sa papa ba Sa identification with peers, na umili tayo ng mga kalaro. Next, adolescence, 14 to 23. Conflict about independence, self-assertion, and sex. And dito yung uh, much more stressful na or troublesome. Or maybe yung committing about sa crimes. And dito yung sa, and dito sa, under sa, under sa stage na to. Maturity, 23 to 50. Satisfaction with career, marriage, and family. Dito naman, nagiging less flexible na sila. Kasi nga, stable na sila kung ano meron sila. Late maturity, 50 to 65. Personality changes in response to physical and social circumstances. Sa old age naman, 65 plus adjustment to loss of friends, career, and status. And then, included din dito yung pagiging security, eh, insecure nila sa isang bagay. Okay? Assessment in Cattell's Theory. Actually, meron yung siyang um, tatlo. The life records or L data, the Q data technique, um, the T data technique. So, mag-start muna tayo dito sa life records or L data. Ito yung, it is a technique for measuring human behavior that involves observing behaviors in a naturalistic naturalistic setting rather than in laboratory setting. Pag sinasabi natin life record or L data, ito yung mga personal records such as yung sa grade point average, yung sa mga driving history, letters of recommendation. Um, ano kaya yung mga possible, ano kaya uh, yung possible pros and cons nito? Ang pros nito is information obtained with requiring SS2 or screenshot to fill the questionnaires. And then, yung cons naman niya, it is provides limited info about the individual. Next, the Q data. 
technique relies on questionnaires. Ibig sabihin, it is obtained by uh, asking people to describe themselves in response to a set of standard questions, either multiple choice or truffles. Okay, and dyan yan. The T-data technique involves the use of what kata called objective personality test. Paano ba? Paano ba pag sinasabi kapag ka, kapag ka objective? Objective. Kapag ka sinasabi kasing objective, andito yung, andito yung asking people to take various tests. Halimbawa, projective, physical, reaction times, ganon. Ang purpose naman ito is para yung test hindi masyadong obvious. Okay? So, yun yung aim ni Katel dito. Okay, nakalimutan ko pala yung pros and cons sa Q-Data Technique. Sa pros ng, pros ng Q-Data Technique is that easily to administer and quick access of info. And then, people, ang cons naman is people may impression manage. Paano pag sinasabi natin impression manage? Ito yung, ito yung it might they lie to make themselves to look good. So, magsisinungaling sila para ang ganda ng result or or pagdating sa pagdating doon sa mag-i-evaluate ng questionnaire ay ang gan- parang mapupuri pa sila ganun and then the cons and cons of t data is the pros is provide objective data kasi nga hindi naman hindi sila pwede or limited lang yung pagiging bias nila and then yung cons nila is objective test may be of limited use Okay, next, dito naman tayo sa Research on Catal's a Theory. Okay, basically, may tatlo siya. The bivariate approach, the clinical approach, and then the multivariate approach. Pag sinasabi natin yung bivariate approach, to studying personality was too restrictive. Ito yung inaaral yung, yung personality ng isang tao na kung saan a person who relies too much on minor details. Sa mga minor details, pag sinasabi natin yung too restrictive, yung, yung alam mo yung minor na nga, minor na nga, mas, mas doon pa sila nag-rely. Kaya, yun yung sinasabing vibrate approach. Pag clinical approach naman, includes case studies, grave analysis, free association, and other techniques is highly subjective naman. Pag multivariate naman, which yields highly specific data, ito naman based on observation and analysis more than one statistic. So, ang mangyayari dito, magkakaroon ng correlation kasi gumagamit siya ng more than one statistics. Okay? Highlights research on Cattell's theory. So, ito yung highlights. Okay, say say natin. Can predict marital stability. Can be fake if you want to present yourself in a more favorable light. Can be used in many cultures, but for more languages, literature, uh, translation, test items, is not possible. Gilded results indicate that some source traits are primarily inherited, while others are determined primarily by environmental influences. Can be identified 16 source traits of personality and can be used for research, um, clinic, called diagnosis and predicting success on the job. So yun yun. Ang um, yun yung highlight ng research on Cattell's ideas. Okay. The last one is behavioral genetics. The area of study study focusing on the connection between genetics and personality is of 10. Ano lang yung ibig sabihin niya ito? Ang pinupoint niya lang dito is ito yung ito yung pinag-aaralan dito yung yung nature versus nurture. Kung paano yung nature and nurture nakaka-influence sa personality na isang tao. Yun lang yung about doon sa behavioral genetics or paano na, na nakaka-influence siya yung, yung nature or yung inborn ka or yung sa nurture or yung sa environment sa behavior na isang tao. Okay, that's all everyone. Um, I'm Jean Calago. I hope na may natutunan kayo. 
Thank you and once again, good day.